Hello, Math Ones. This is uh, the Sensei. I'm giving my first lesson during the coronavirus. We're doing chapter 9.1.1 in the CPM book, uh, solving linear inequalities. We're just good, very basics of linear inequalities. One variable, linear inequalities. A couple things, just so you know. Uh, most of my instruction, or all of my instruction, will be done on paper. If you see my face like this during the video, it's probably me going off on some tangent. So you may fast forward that if you see my face, if you just want to get the math done. But if you're bored, you want to hear me talk about some nonsense, then uh, listen to my, if my, if my face is right here on the video, just play away. Listen to what I have to say. Don't know how much I'm going to do it. You know, it's just because I'm one of the few ADD teachers, so sometimes I just go on random stuff. And then finally, if I make a mistake, let me know or write in the comments where I made a mistake so that other people can see that. This is my first time doing it, so I guarantee there's going to be mistakes. But uh, without further ado, here we go. Lesson 9.1.1, solving one variable inequalities. Okay, let's go ahead and start with the warm-up here. Go ahead and pause this, and I'd like you to try to solve these equations here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started on it right now, actually. Okay, 5x equals 20. 5 times x equals 20. Basically, we divide by 5 on both sides. 20 divided by 5 is 4. So we have x equals 4. Okay, next, negative 2x divided by negative 16. We have divide both sides by negative 2. And then x is going to equal positive 8. Okay. x minus 5 equals 21. Okay, so there we're subtracting 5, so we're going to add 5 on both sides. 21 plus 5 is 26. x equals 26. And then negative 5 plus x equals negative 11. We are going to add 5 on both sides. And then we are going to get x equals, I have opposite si signs, so I'm going to subtract. That'll be negative 6. And there's our warm up. We need to know these basics before we go on to um, solving linear inequalities. Okay, we've always talk about solving single uh, variable linear, or just single variable inequalities. We'll get to the linear in just a, in, in a little bit, but not going to do that today. Let, let's uh, go ahead and look at what these mean, okay? This is a monster, right? And the monster, it wants to eat the bigger number. So, for example, if I have the number 9 and the number 10, basically the monster is going to want to eat the 10, right? Try to get the focus there. And the monster would face that way, and the monster would definitely eat the 10 because 10 is bigger than 9. So we have a couple things here. Writing up here, this means based on the left side, this is going to be called less than because we're looking at the left side we call it less than now if we have a line under that we call that less than or equal to less than or equal to now based on this way if it's facing that way we call call it greater than And this side we'll call greater than with a line under that or equal to. So for example, if we do something like um, like this, like we say, like we did before, okay? We would read this as 9 is less than 10. Okay, so now that's just the basics. I'm sure you've seen all that before. But let's go talk about something that we might need a little bit another refresher with. Okay, so here we go. 
let's have, let's say we say this, x, now remember, if I was to read this, you look at the left side, and I say x is greater than or equal to negative 2. What does that mean? Well, what could x be? It's anything bigger than negative 2 or equal to. So can x be 1? Yes. Can x be 2? Yes. Can x be negative 3? Well, negative 3 is smaller than negative 2, so it cannot be negative 3. Can x be negative 5? No, because negative 5 is less than negative 2, so it can't be that. Can x be negative 2? Well, negative 2 is not bigger than negative 2, but it is equal to negative 2, so yes, it will work. Now, let's do another one. Let's do, let's try out, do a little line to separate there. Is x less than five? Anything less than five is what x will be. And anything, right? It can x be two? Yes. Can x be 7? No, x cannot be 7. Can x be 0? Yes, x can be 0. Can x be 9? No, x cannot be 9 because 9 is bigger than 5. Can x be 5? No, because 5 is not less than 5, so it cannot be 5. It needs the equal sign. So it's anything less than 5. So let's see if we can draw a picture that represents that. x is less than 5. What we're going to do is we're going to have, I'm going to put a number line here, 0, and I'll put the number 5. Now, where would all the numbers less than 5 be? It would be everything going in this direction. And this is how you would draw the number line. This number line represents x is less than 5. Let's go back to our x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Oh, let's go. So what this means is any number, it's going to be infinite amount of numbers that are less than 5. x is greater than negative 2. The way we're going to write our solution is we want to graphically represent it and put a 0 here, put our negative 2, now it's going to be bigger than negative 2. So bigger than negative 2 is going to be everything in this direction. Bigger is going to be that direction. And because it's equal to, we fill in the circle and we show that it's every single number that way. And that's how you would draw the graph for that. Now what if we have a representation that looks like this? Negative 1. What the heck is this? Can you see that when it gets in focus? Apologize about the focusing. Um, negative 1 is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to 4. Okay? Basically, what this is saying is the best representation is well, let's see what numbers would include, what we would include here. It's saying x is bigger than negative 1. So, would it include negative 2? No, because negative 2 is smaller than negative 1. Would it include negative 3? Nope, that is also smaller. Would it include 0? Yes, because that is bigger than negative 1. Would it include 3? Yes, because that is bigger than negative 1. Would it include 5? Well, that's bigger than negative 1, but it's saying x is also smaller than 4. So 5 is bigger than 4, so we cannot include that. Now, the way you see this here where x is in the middle, it's going to be all the numbers between negative 1 and positive 4. And the way we would draw that is we're going to go like this, this, 
Uh, let's put our negative one here and our four here. We'll put a zero in the middle and let's fill in a circle here. Fill in a circle here and show that it's everything less than four and everything bigger than negative one and that would be our representation right there. That is our graphic representation. So that's how you would represent that. Now, couple others, let's just do them real quick. I want you to do this for practice. Write a number line that rep write a graphic rep representation at, at, on a number line that represents x is less than negative 3. Okay, I'm going to pause for a second so that you can, or you pause and see if you can do it before I get it there. And here's how I would write it out. 0, negative 3. Okay, I'm going to do an, okay, x is less than negative 3. So I'm going to put a, it's not equal to, so I do an open circle above the negative 3. And less than is going to be all the numbers this way. If you did that, good job. Okay, that's what you're supposed to have. Try this one now. Okay, here we go. Try this. X is greater than 25. Okay, see if you get that. X is greater than 25. Go ahead and pause it. Try this on your own. You gotta try. The, you gotta have a piece of paper out and a pencil and writing this out. There's no way you're gonna solve this unless you do it on your own. Put 0, 25. So it's bigger than 25. So it's not equal to 25. So there's an open circle. Which one I'm gonna go right or left if it's bigger than 25? I will go right. Very good. Okay, that's all you got to do. And then remember, that represents every single number bigger than 25. It's an, it could represent 25.1, it can represent 25.001, it can represent 50,000, anything. Okay? Now, sometimes you're going to have x represent two different things that are not connected, which is like this. Look at this one. This is very interesting here. Let's say x is less than or equal to 1, and x is greater than or equal to 5. Okay? Now, how would we represent that? Well, let's draw our two numbers there, because there are two different numbers. I have on here, I'm going to have 5. I'll also put 1. Okay? 0 is going to be over there to the left of 1. So let's look at it one thing at a time x is less than or equal to 1. So this is saying x is less than or equal to 1. So we're going to go ahead and go here doing the little filled in circles equal to 1 and less than will be that direction. x is greater than or equal to 5. I fill in the circle and then I go in that direction is bigger than 5, and that would be my representation here. So it's an infinite number bigger than 5, and an infinite number smaller than 1, but nothing in between. Okay, so that's the other situation, right, where you have them going in opposite directions compared to this representation right here, where look how this is together. Usually when it's together in one form like that, your number line is going to be one solid connected line. But if it's separate like this, usually it will be two separate lines on the number line. Okay. See if you can do this one now. Try this one here on your own. Sorry about that. Let me start over. I wrote it wrong. I wrote the problem wrong. Apologize. For 14 minutes into this, I made my first mistake. Okay, go ahead and pause your video and see if you can do that. All right, here we go. So all you have to do is write the two numbers that I got there, okay? I have the number 0, and I have the number negative 5. Let's look at it one thing. Remember I said if it's connected like this, there, how there's one solution, it's probably be one 
solid line. Look what I did there. Oops, let's do that again. Sorry, is negative five bigger than zero? It is not. Zero should be on the right. Negative five should be on the left. That is better. Okay, x is bigger than negative five. So you have negative five, is it equal to? No, so go that direction. X is less than zero, less than or equal to zero. So guess what? Filled in circle, less than would be in that direction, and that's what it would represent. Okay. Now, let's talk about, let's do some review. What does this symbol mean here? When I say absolute value, right? This means absolute value. That means the distance from zero. The absolute value is always positive. So how far is negative five from zero? How many units? Well, it's actually five units. Well, let me ask you this. How many units is positive five from zero? Well, that is also five. So let's go ahead and absolute value of negative two. What do you think the answer to that is? It's actually two. Absolute value of positive eight. What do you think that is? Eight. Okay, now, so what if I say that the absolute value of x is equal to positive five? Okay, now we're going to away from inequalities here for a second and let's think about what this means. What number can I put in there for x to make it equal positive five? Well, if you look here, we actually kind of did it. Right? I plugged in negative five, I got absolute value of negative five and I got five. And then I plugged in positive five and I also got five. So I actually have two solutions here. If I put in positive five, that will for sure make my answer true. And if I put in negative five, that will also make my solution true. So now how does that work with inequalities? Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to say absolute value of x. Absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay. So what this means here is I, any number I put in here, whatever the result is, will be bigger than 2. Now, if obvious answers I can put in right here. Yes, if I put in 3, that'll work. Absolute value of three is bigger than two because absolute value of three is three. And same with four and five and 100. All of those, if I put those in, they'll be bigger than two. Now, what if I put in uh, one? Absolute value of one is one, and so that will not be bigger than two, so that will not work out. Uh, well, zero will not work. So what's another number I can go in that direction that will be bigger than two? Well, let's try negative three. Absolute value of negative three is positive three. Put that in there, will, be positive. will that be bigger than two? Yes. And so will negative four, and so will negative five, and so will negative 100. So we have an interesting thing going on here. What we're saying here is yes, it's anything bigger than two, and then anything less than negative two. So the way we'd write this is x is greater than or equal to two. You write the sign the same. And then the trick is, is we're gonna flip the sign, and then instead of it being a positive, we do a negative, and those will be our solutions. So how would we write that on the number line? Well, I guess we'd write it like this. We'll write, you got two, you got negative two, x is less than negative two and equal to, so it's gotta be equal to in that direction and greater than two and that'll go in that direction. Probably, but.
What's that? I think Elijah's going to need a little bit of a longer day. I have the girls starting their schooling at 9. I'm wondering if we should start at 8.30. Do you ever wonder why... I don't know, I was just thinking. Do you ever wonder why, like, sinister people wear, like, hoods so you can't see them? Like, uh, take Darth Sidious, for example. Then, uh, well, I just remember in Return of the Jedi. I think he was in that new movie. I haven't seen Skywalker, The Rise of Skywalker yet, but you know, he's all like, my precious, will you, like, my precious is from another movie. Oh, sorry. That was actually from Lord of the Rings, but can you tell who I am? Like this. You know what I mean? You, I mean, I mean, I can kind of see like this, but, um, it's, I guess it's more for mo movie effect. I could not fight with a lightsaber like this at all because I can only see just above a bit. Anyway, we're at about 21 minutes of the video and I don't know. Sorry, I'm getting kind of... You will know the dark force, Luke. <laughs> okay, let us look at... Sorry, that little break there. Just helping myself get a little... Uh, just, I don't know. You know me. Okay. So let's say we have a number line here. We go from 2 to negative 3. I have an open circle, and this goes this direction. I have a closed circle. This goes this direction. You have all the numbers in between. And on the outside, how would you write that as an inequality? Well, let's look at it. We see that it's separate. It's two separate number lines. So we have to write two x's, okay, not one x. Let's look at this side. This is saying x is less than, see it's smaller than negative two, how do I write x is less than negative two? x is less than negative two, and look at here, that this one, it's saying x is bigger than two. So I say x is greater than, look at that filled in circle, equal to positive two. And that's how you would write that. Uh, let's see, let's go for another one here. Try this one. Let's say we're going from negative 4 to 2. We've got 0 here. Open circle at the 4 all the way to the 2 and we have a closed circle. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do this one here. Can you write the inequality that represents this number line? Pause it. Go, write it on your own. Now you can see this is one solid line here, so we're just going to do one little x. We'll put the 2 over here, the negative 4 over here, okay, because it's one solid. And guess what? Hey, it's bigger than negative 4, so I'm going to say x is bigger than negative 4, but it's not equal to. And it's equal to, but it's less than 2, so x is less than 2, but it's also equal to 2, okay? It's not equal to negative 4. Okay, now let's go to solving one variable inequalities. And we have to write the solution in the number line and everything like that. So let's say here we have 2x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 3. Okay, we're going to solve this like kind of like the warm ups that we did, but this is a two stepper. So let's draw a line right here. Now we keep the monster facing that way here. So I have a 2. What do I have next to the x? I got the 2. I got the negative 5. What am I going to get rid of first? Well, because 5 is furthest away, I get rid of that. Instead of taking away 5, I'm going to add 5. And then I say, hey, what's 3 plus 5? 8. Bring down your inequality like so. This becomes 0 and bring down your 2x. So, now I have 2x is greater than or equal to 8. I divide by 2, and I say x now, because this goes away, greater than or equal to 8 divided by 2 is 4. We must also write this on a number line to show our representation. x is greater than 4, so I'll do 0, 4. x is bigger than 4, so 4 is here. Solid line bigger would be in that direction, and that is how you would solve that. 
Uh, single variable inequality. Let's try another one. Okay, I want you to try this one on your own. This one has a little bit of a interesting twist to it. Three minus two x is less than one. Okay, three minus two x is less than one. Okay. Go ahead and try to solve, pause and try to solve this. You must solve this on your own in order to understand this. So here we go. I'm gonna do it now that you've solved it. See if your answer is the same as mine. Drawing the line at the inequality. Now I got to, I have a three, I got a negative two. Let's get rid of the three first. I subtract three on both sides because the three is furthest from the x. So I'm going to get rid of that. It's a positive 3, so I take away 3. Now, what do I bring? This goes away. Bring down the negative 2x. Bring down your inequality. And then 1 minus 3. They're opposite signs, so I subtract. Is 2. I got more negatives. Now, watch what happens here. Because I have a negative 2x and multiplying by negative 2, I could divide by negative 2. This cancels out. Now because I'm dividing by a negative on both sides, the sign flips and this becomes x is greater than 1. Here's how this would work. I have here um, 0, 1, and greater than 1, open circle, and in that direction. Okay, that's it. That's all I have for that lesson. That's my first lesson. I'm sorry about the focusing. I don't know if I can fix that or not, but hopefully you got it. I have an assignment on my um, calendar. You are welcome to do it. It is optional. As long as you can do all the stuff that I just showed you, um, you will do fine. Okay, if you do all this stuff, you can solve everything that I've done you'll be fine. Um, I don't have an assignment for you. I just want you to study that and get that going. Do that on your own. All right. This is Sensei signing off. I will see you next time. You can do math. I am proud of you. Proud of you. We're going to pull this off. We're going to pull it off. You got it. Keep fighting the good fight. Keep running the race. Just make sure you